This video is connected with the skeleton and muscles, but it's part two. And in this video, we're looking at bones, bone growth and remodeling. So very straightforward, just label the outer structure of a bone. So this is a long bone and it has a shaft. So the shaft is known as the diaphysis. So if you imagine a dog holding a bone in his mouth in a cartoon, he has the diaphysis in his mouth. And then the two ends of the bone are the epiphyses. So one of them is the epiphysis. Covering the ends of bones is cartilage and cartilage is an example of a connective tissue. It's made of protein fibres, collagen, and it's highly flexible, so it's very flexible. And cartilage cushions the ends of the bones, so it prevents the bones from chipping together. And this allows friction-free movement, so the role of cartilage again here is protection. Covering the outside of bones is the periosteum and this is a protective membrane and it's on the outer surface of the bone but it's not where there's cartilage so it's basically on all the areas of the bone that are exposed apart from that area covered by cartilage the top and the bottom. So just to give you a general idea you can see that I've outlined it in green here. So this protective membrane contains many nerves and blood vessels and it also contains these very special bone building cells called osteoblasts. B for building osteoblasts. So the type of bone that covers the whole bone surface is known as compact bone, but it's thickest at the diaphysis at the shaft. It's very strong and its function is that it provides strength and rigidity. And really important that you know that that's asked so often at exams. What's the function of compact bone to provide strength and rigidity? Bone is a living tissue, it's a connective tissue, and it's made up of collagen, which is a protein, and calcium salts, for example, calcium phosphate, and also bone cells. The cells that build bone are known as the osteoblasts. The collagen gives the bone flexibility, whereas the calcium phosphate, it provides the hardness, so these salts will provide hardness. The bone contains many blood vessels, and these are necessary because all of these bone cells need to be provided with nutrients. Another type of bone is spongy bone and it's generally found mostly in the epiphyses at the ends of the bones. Like compact bone, it too is made up of exactly the same material. So it has that collagen, that's the organic element. It also has the calcium phosphate, those salts, those calcium salts, and also the bone cells. Spongy bone, however, is not as dense as compact bone. It has more spaces. It's made up of bony bars and bony plates. So that's important. The fact that it has lots of spaces, it means that it's not as heavy. And the function of spongy bone is to provide strength and rigidity. In the spaces of the spongy bone is where you find red bone marrow. Red bone marrow is where those blood cells are made, the red and white blood cells and the platelets. Running down through the middle of the bone or the diaphysis is this hole or this cavity known as the medullary cavity and this reduces the weight of the bones. Can you imagine how heavy they would be if they were completely solid? So the yellow marrow is found inside this medullary cavity. Yellow marrow is this lipid or fat rich substance. And if you ever give a dog a bone, he would go crazy if you tried to get it off him because he's trying to get the yellow marrow out of the middle of the bone, out of that medullary cavity. Yellow marrow is really important because it can be converted into red marrow if more blood cells need to be produced. So how does bone develop in a human in the first place? Well, bone develops from cartilage in the embryo and the bone development generally begins around week eight in embryo development. The cartilage begins to be replaced at this stage with hard bone. This is called ossification. So cartilage is always the starting point for bone development. So how does bone get longer? So how does it grow in length? Well, it grows in length due to the action of these growth plates and growth plates are discs of cartilage. They're found between the epiphyses and the diaphysis and there are cells in the growth plate called chondrocytes and they produce a cartilage frame. But eventually this gets replaced because the osteoblasts come in and they will produce a collagen matrix which gets covered over in those calcium salts, for example, calcium phosphate. However, these growth plates will eventually become inactive, usually by the end of the late teens. So your bones will only get longer as long as those growth plates are active. After that, no matter what you do, your bones will never get longer. And this generally happens, as I said, around the late teens. 
So although your bones will stop getting longer because those growth plates will become inactive, your bones are continually being broken down and rebuilt throughout your life. And the two types of bone cells involved in this are osteoclasts, they're breaking down bone, releasing calcium into the blood. And then you've got the bone building cells, the osteoblasts, that are building bone by producing a collagen matrix. And this gets covered over with calcium salts forming hard bone. So what are the factors that are important for bone renewal? Well, diet is essential. If you don't have enough calcium or vitamin D in your diet as well, well then you don't have the raw materials to make new bone. As well as that exercise, physical stress causes the bones to become stronger, the osteoblasts become active. So hormones also influence bone renewal. So you've got growth hormone and you've got the sex hormones which can influence bone renewal. And then you've got parathormone which causes blood calcium levels to rise. So that's stimulating those osteoclasts. So three factors that influence bone renewal are diet, exercise and hormones. Just be able to list them. So what should I know? Well, this is again very quick to summarise and you could do a lot of it by just drawing a very decent diagram of a bone. So that's where I'd start. Draw a diagram of the bone, put in all of these labels and write a sentence about each one. Then I'd go on and write a few sentences or bullet points about bone growth, about the role of the growth plates and then just state something about the osteoblasts, how they produce the collagen matrix and this gets covered over in that calcium phosphate, which is that calcium salt. Then you could talk about bone remodeling or renewal. So you could talk about the role of osteoblasts and osteoclasts and then just write down the three factors that influence bone renewal, diet, hormones and exercise. So really easy and very fast. Hope this helped. Best of luck. Use your notes. Use your textbook. So you know that the icons used in this video are from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I still want to state that. And these videos are not made for monetary gain or intended for commercial use.